Chicken Chase podcast brought to you by Will Canavo, yeah, Zach exactly Fittler. Like Very happy to have Caelan Ponger on as our first guest. It's unreal. Finally in the booth. We've been anticipating this for quite a while. So, welcome. Thank you, Nad. First uh, podcast for you too. It's a, it's a privilege to, to be the first one. Thank you. Yeah, we couldn't ask for a better guest. You've been killing <laughs> it recently. Thank you, Nat. It's, um, we were talking before this first podcast, a bit new for you boys, but um, yeah, just relax, just enjoy it. Uh, I've done a few myself and they're all, they're all funny, it's all a good time. Yeah. Well, starting with um, your skill and everything, um, congrats on the Daily M. That was unreal. I just wanted to really ask you, how did that feel? Just kind of just yeah. being up on stage with yeah, it? Yeah, um, it was a bit surreal. I didn't... Um, I didn't actually think I was going to win it. Um, I thought Sean was going to win. Um, but, yeah, once it sort of got to the end and when I saw that I won, it was a pretty surreal moment. I sort of just wanted to thank um, everyone that had their hands on, on my performances performances throughout the year. It wasn't so much me. It wasn't like so much my award. It was an award that sort of um, a lot of people – I should should have thanked, but it was a bit hard. Like when you're on stage, yeah. you're nervous. Um, it's hard to sort of go through everyone, but there's so many people that helped me throughout the year and um, my teammates especially. And that's especially important for the club to bring in Tamika Upton in as well. Like you can just see the whole community gets around that and Knights mm-hmm. has just finished well. NRLW brought back second premiership. Yeah. And even the Knights finished real strong. Like you can see that makes a difference. Everyone gets around that. Yeah, for sure. Like the NRLW team, it's pretty crazy what they've done. Um, and Tamika herself, it was awesome for my for me, like to go up there, two fullbacks, both from the Knights, um, to win, you know, respectfully the best player I- in each grade. Um, yeah, it's pretty special and I hope Newcastle fans enjoyed that because we did as well. Like we as a as a NRL player, the performances that we made we put together were awesome and then obviously in NRLW were doing the same and they won and it's just awesome for the community. Yeah. Yeah, um we want to kick off with preseason. Obviously we're starting to roll in and you've been training pretty hard. Everyone's noticed. Even the juniors are off. We've been training. We've been getting flogged. Yeah, nice. How's that been? How's the start? It's gonna be good. Uh so I start officially back next week. Um but then like our boys have been back for now for like three weeks. Yeah. Um, everyone's fit. Um, you can tell there's a good feel around the place. Everyone's hungry. Um, we want to we wanna be better than what we were last year. We want to yeah. create more moments that we're proud of than what we did this year. And, um, you know, we want 30,000 at every game next year. Like that's – we're going to get that through our performances and we're going to get that through preseason. So um, it's just, it's an awesome time of the year, I reckon. It's a, There's no pressure. You just go out there. You get fit. You work hard with your friends. Um yeah, I really enjoy this period of the of the year. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah, um, for me, I'm quite different. <laughs> Pre season, <laughs> it just sucks. Like, yeah, it oh, does suck. Like, especially when I was young. Uh, like, I did my first one, my first NRL preseason when I was seventeen, um, and my preparation into it was poor. Like, mm. I remember I was at the Cowboys, and Wednesdays were our big session, and after that session, I'd go and eat KFC because yeah. I thought. <laughs> I deserve it. Like I've just done a big yeah, sesh, no, but it, it wouldn't help me two days later when I was doing another big session. Like, but you just learn these things as you get older. Um, but yeah, and it I, it does suck as much. It's so hard, and yeah. the days are long, and it, it, it's a tough period. But the the reward you get out of this, you know, two month block, it just sets you up for the year, and that's why like every moment you think it's tough. The enjoyment you're going to get out of it so much higher, so much better. So yeah. that's sort of the the mindset I have, and like, not, yeah, I don't know. I just enjoy it. Yeah, and you just had a bit of a refresh at the Gold Coast, yeah. We watched another podcast that just came out about a week ago with so Keegan. Yeah. yeah, he's he, yeah. So I was going up there for a holiday, and um, he's a good mate of mine. He's doing some good stuff in the mental health area yeah. around sport, um, bringing light to, I guess, that mental side of sport, which. Um, I've probably learned over the last couple of years more so than when I was like 18, 19, 20. I didn't really think about that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, he's brought, he's bringing light to it. And yeah, that podcast was probably the first time I've jumped on one and opened up about my, my journey and stuff. So, yeah. but yeah, it got to go up there and refresh before coming back and getting into it was, was always good. No, it's unreal. Especially now the game's really focused on that mental side. Yeah. Like you boys are 
17, 18? Yeah. 17. 17, like at, at 17, like I did not think about that stuff at all. Um, but if you can start sort of thinking about it now and, and, and diving into it and, and implementing it, like don't go too full on. Um, but I definitely think it's important uh, and, and can, you know, you could probably get a step ahead on, on other people your age. Like when I was 18, I, I didn't think about any of that sort of stuff. You know, I was just playing footy. Um, but it, as you get older and the pressure gets higher and things get harder, you do need to sort of think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for you right now, I was thinking um, coming up as you being so talented and also just being the main spotlight for your team and um, just like in the whole NRL in general, what is like the negativity um, in just in the media? Because I know at this age already, I'm starting to cop it a bit and it's like, mm. fuck, it's the worst. I can't like, sometimes it's just so, it's just hard not to look at it. Like, yeah, you know, just newspaper. Everyone wants a negative of anyone. Doesn't yeah, good they, they do. Yeah. Um, I've, I've had plenty. I've had plenty on and off the field. Um, I was probably, I was exposed to it pretty early. I was exposed to it at your age, to be honest. Um, and I think when you're young, you know, you're curious, so you do want to have a look and, you know, you do read bad comments. But, uh, yeah, a coach said to me, you know, if you're going to read the good, uh, if you're going to take the good, you've got to be able to take the, the bad. So just don't take either. And I don't know, you probably just have to practice literally not looking at it. Like, I'm not someone that sits there and reads comments. Um, I don't go through, I don't have Facebook, which is probably a good thing because Facebook's full of, all those negative articles, whereas Instagram's a little bit better. It's still not great, but a little bit better. Um, yeah, and I guess that you just choose. If you're going to go in there and read them, you've got to be willing to take the hits. Um, and then from there, you, you choose what you do with them. You know, if you're going to let them affect you and, and affect you in a negative way, then you, know, you probably need to learn not to go on and, and read them. But if you're going to read them and use it as a bit of motivation or... Um, you know, a lot of the time I've had people doubt me, but I've always just work, worked hard and had faith that I'll be, you know, I'll prove them wrong. And that's kind of been my mindset. Um, yeah, it, it, social media can be a good thing or a bad thing, um, but it is probably just teaching yourself not to read those comments. But they're always going to be there. Yeah. And you've just got to accept that. Like, you're not going to please everyone. Like, even at the back end of the year, you know, we've won 10 in a row, but there's still people that aren't, you know, we're saying we're not, we don't deserve to win or you got lucky or stuff like that. Like, you're not going to please everyone. I think you just got to understand that. You just got to learn that. And I've, I've learned, I've learned to just deal with that. I don't really care about the people sitting on the couch. You know, I care about what my family say, uh, what my teammates think and what my coaches think. And if they're all in check, then I don't really care what other people say. Yeah. I think that's I think important. Something that I've noticed coming through the pathways is you start to see expectations roll onto you, mm. and of course you got to you got to hold yourself accountable and you got to meet some. Mm. But um, coming through you growing up, how did you deal with that? How did you deal with the expectations? Like, did that pressure ever become too much, especially transitioning to NRL when you're at the Cowboys? Yeah, I think I think my dad had high expectations of me growing up, yeah. and that so that put my expectations for myself high as well. So then growing up and coming through the ranks, other people's expectations weren't higher than my own. Yeah. I've always I've always wanted to be the best. I've always like trained to be that way and always had that mindset. So it's not new to me when someone's <laughs> expect, ex expecting me to be, you know, really good. Like I, I want to be there as well. So again, it probably goes back to like the people you care about and, and their expectations of you like your mum your dad if you you know whoever you're close with or whoever your closest supporters their expectations of you matter like yeah. again like i said the guy sitting on the couch eating a donut he yeah. it doesn't matter what he wants yeah. it only matters what your teammate want your teammates expect of you your coaches and that that close little circle um but you should have high high expectations of yourself and standards of yourself as well yeah. i think i've always done that like when i walk into pre-season like my expectation for myself is to be the, the best yeah so when i go get out there like when the coaches expect me to be the best i'm not shocked by that so i think that's important but yeah just making sure that 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 close circle um you know you care about their expectations the most their opinions their whatever their support is the, is the most important and the yeah. rest is just 
complete background noise. Ah, for sure, exactly. And it's easier th- said than done, but it is background noise. Um, I don't know if it's a – maybe you need to, to train it or just really, like, really value the, the close circle around you because um, everything else is background noise. Like, unless they're in these four walls or your four walls of your house or wherever you are, it doesn't matter. Like, it does not – it doesn't matter. I think well, we've, got a, we've got a good question here. I want to get straight into yeah. this. All right. The decision was made years ago, and as you've mentioned in a previous podcast, you agreed to transition into the AFL until that moment came where you debuted for the Cowboys. Since then, have you ever reconsidered playing in a different sport, mm. anything like that? You've got a massive skill set, golf. Mm. Yeah. We've, heard a, we've heard you're an all-rounder. Yeah, we've, oh. we've, we've looked into it. We, we've dug pretty deep and found yeah. you covered I do. Sports. Oh, my, like, I love it here at the Knights. Yeah, um, yeah I grew up playing a lot of sport, but, yeah, I mean, I love it here. I mean, I would like to dabble maybe later in my career or later on, but I don't think, I don't think AFL, I can, it's, I'd have to change my whole body to do that. Yeah, it's um, a whole different game. Whole different game now. I don't think, I'd have to lose, like, probably, like, six kilos just to, to keep up with the game, but um, I dabbled in that early. I actually was going to do it. Um, I don't say I can't say I wish I did it, but because yeah. I'm obviously happy here. But yeah, I think you know I think I got goals and dreams. I want to tick off in rugby league first, and um, I'm definitely staying in this game until then, until I tick those off. But who knows? I'd yeah. like to, I'd like to probably travel and stuff like that. Yeah, of course. Is there um speaking of golf since it's such a Play such an old age doesn't matter. Yeah, no, yeah. That, I should have, I should have stuck with that. <laughs> no, no preseason. They like you can play till you're fifty, yeah, yeah. Crazy, literally. Yeah. And they, the money they make, the the lifestyle they have, the travel they do. Um, it's a pretty intense sport, though. Like the pressure we have is high, but the pressure that they have is probably higher. Yeah, to be honest, yeah. Just look at Tiger Woods. Mm. The stuff he's doing, he's reaching fifty. I know, he's, he's getting on, but he's the king. Yeah, he's, he, the king. he's the king. I remember listening in one podcast, you mentioned part of that transition into rugby was because your mates were just getting around it and mm. it was hot in Queensland. You know, you didn't have the same <laughs> yeah, literally. facilities it's too in hot. New Zealand. <laughs> if you what a kid, eh? <laughs> if you had have stayed in New Zealand, do you reckon you would have pursued golf? I think I would have. It was my main sport. Um, I really enjoyed individual sport. Like, it's, it's all, it's, it's on you. There's no one else to blame. Yeah. Um, I kind of enjoyed that aspect, but yeah, I don't know. I, I grew up playing rugby as well over there. Soccer was a big one. Um, soccer. I played soccer as well. That was my main sport when I was like 10, 11, 12. Then 13, 14 was golf. Then about, yeah, 15 onwards was rugby league really. But um, I sort of had to pick one at 15, 16 because that's when it kind of gets a little bit more serious. Um, I reckon golf. I would have stuck with golf. Yeah, which I'd would have been nice. <laughs> you can sort of cruise a little. Not cr- it's it it's a lot harder mentally, but I mean uh, physically probably just as hard as well in a different sense. It can start to piss you off if you're not playing a good game. I've cried on the golf course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've full, I've full cried because I my old man my old man was pretty tough on me. I wasn't allowed to like, and I still don't now, which is probably a good thing. I don't show much emotion physically. Like it's all inside. So I'd be like walking i'd have tears running down my eyes but i'd be just trying to act normal yeah that's what my dad didn't see you know how some people when they're angry and stuff they throw like they'll throw clubs and stuff yeah i was never allowed to do that so even now like i think it's probably a good thing now because on the field if i make a mistake or anything i try and not show too much yeah definitely it's all internal (laughs) they're hurting inside yeah I'm, i'm filthy inside but it's um yeah it's probably a good lesson yeah I've noticed that too. Like just watching you, I like um, you get some players just swearing, throwing their heads down, but you always seem so composed and just the same. It's almost just not in a rude way, just kind of lifeless, like nothing mm. happened. Like yeah, I think that's that. from golf. I think like my old man was always like if you hit a bad shot or something, I wasn't really allowed to show too much emotion. Like I wasn't allowed to swear or have a hissy fit or a tantrum, you know what I mean? So I think I've I've carried that through into rugby league and I've sort of learned, like JT was, Jonathan, he taught me a lot of like watching for other people's body language. Um, so you can see when someone's tired, you can see when they're injured so that you can get at them. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and it's vice versa. Like, if someone's looking at me, I don't want them to know that I'm angry or or fatigued or stuff like that. So it's kind of keeping that straight face. And I reckon you look at the back, Nathan Clear is one of the guns at it. He'll make an error and he'll just jog back to the line and right. get back into Nothing it. Happened. Next job. Um, yeah, as you get older, yeah, you sort of learn those things. Yeah, they've been picking up on us at training. Like, I don't even want you to drop your hands. Body language knees, and stuff, yeah. yeah. Stay up, it's, head yeah, up. <laughs> yeah. It's, I know how good's the rest sometimes. Just put it. <laughs> that, just the hands on knees can make such a big difference, no, but so yeah, no, it's um that's the standard when you get into NRL. Yeah, they're picking it. They're picking on us bad. Like they just drill mm. it into us. Yeah, we if like if we have bad body language, like you just don't like you just learn not to. You have yeah. to, but if you do, it's like a you'll get a penalty for everyone. Yeah. So you just you're not going to do it. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the Roosters have clocked up about twelve by now. Just from some boy, yeah. Oh. Mate, there's so some boys. Do you boys play a fair bit? Yeah, um, we're We'd both in SG ball season now. Yeah, pre season. I'm at the Roosters and oh yeah, nice. Chips of you. Are you back? Are you back in the training now? Yeah, yeah back started soon. last week. Yeah, I've been like a week and a half now. Yep. Yeah, yeah, nice. It's tough. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it Especially is tough. Especially our new coach. We just we just picked up Jake Friend for our new coach. Oh, is he friendly? Yeah, yeah nah. Yeah. He trains hard, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh, Constant wrestling. He yep. loves it. He's a perfectionist with wrestling. Yeah. I heard even now in retirement, he still trains just as hard. Apparently, like, three times a week, four times a week, five times yeah. a week. He gives me a rundown of his training. It's just yeah. unbelievable. Especially with these two kids. I don't know who does it. Yeah. Yeah, no. Well, they're different, those boys. Like, yeah. those roosters, sort of old boys. Our old boys are the same. They train hard. They, they love it. They literally love that sort of stuff. So, that's pretty good. It's amazing so. how they can keep on Mm. So he's been back for two weeks now Yeah it's pretty weird eh? We stepped foot on the pitch Against each other this year And now we're in a podcast booth together <laughs> Yeah That's good That's good I wish me and Connor would, Were the same <laughs> Yeah As soon as he As soon as he signed With the Roosters I hated him so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he sees this <laughs> I don't blame me honestly He should have stayed here <laughs> Oh he should have I know Nah That's good It's good boys Do you reckon that Kind of led to 257 Drifting Ending away? Yep 100% Yeah yeah, we did. It did. Um, when he signed with the Roosters, we were going to continue it. We saw the reunion video came out. It was nice. It was good. Every time we catch up, it's good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we were going to continue it, and then it was just too hard. We didn't know how to sort of make it work. Um, and then we just sort of had different lives for a bit there, and um, it was a bit hard to continue it. Yeah. Will there be any other um, co-host of Two Five Seven? Croaks can probably continue on his own. He's still that got Croaks. Croaks was. He was the glue to our to our podcast. Yeah, he um, seemed more keen on it than you two. <laughs> he was, and he was good at it. That that was probably why he's actually a good host, and he's good at podcasting. So that's probably something for him to do post footy. To be honest, he's that good at it. You reckon? Yeah, yeah, no, and he 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 enjoys it. It's pretty cool this season when they um handed out our jerseys. They got all the like younger players. Croaks gave me my jersey. It's yeah, that good. That's mad. Yeah, yeah, he's um he's a he's a He's a good man, Croaks. Everyone loves him. Yeah. So. He's always happy. He's always happy. Oh, no, he's not always happy. I've seen him when he's not. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, he's, he's a good man. Yeah. That's unreal. Well, um, speaking of after footy, just um, for Croaks, do you have any plan of either doing a podcast or just like your own brand? I heard mm. you were doing your own little brand, like clothing brand for a bit. I had a little bit going on, yeah. Um, I've dabbled in, on, in that sort of stuff. I, I did that. Probably two years ago, I did that a lot. Um, just was doing everything, just putting all my chips into a lot of baskets, and uh, it was probably taking my energy away from footy. Yeah. So I don't know if this is the right answer or, or what I'm supposed to tell people, but like right now, for the next few years, my main focus is footy. Um, I just want to be the best at footy as I can be yeah. and get everything out of myself in this profession, and I'll I'll. I'll look for other businesses and, and dabble in things, but I won't go all in like I have in the past um, just because I want to, you know, I've got so much going on here and I want to focus on footy and, and whatnot. But, yeah, I'll try and look to set up myself for when I retire, but probably these next couple of years is a big focus on footy. Especially now while you're playing your best footy. Like if mm. you really focus on it now over the next few years, you'll yeah. get that sense of contentment. Like yeah. You put it all in. Instead of like being at the bottom of the pool and having to swim – you know, yeah. while I'm at the top, sort of just do that anyway. Like put in the effort while I'm up at the top, and um, yeah. So that's what I'm probably gonna do over these next couple of years. But I won't like 
start my own beer brand like I have and then start my own coffee brand like I have yeah. start my own, like sort of just go in with other people and, and hopefully they can do all the work for me and <laughs> yeah. I just sit back a little bit so um enjoy. but that's yeah it's that's probably something I'll look at over the next couple of years yeah. oh wow well um with all that brand and jumping into brands and everything like um as you said you want to just kind of do your just kind of hopefully be guided into anything and kind of just base your own just kind of make something for yourself. Is that something you like? Um, kind of inspiring to just like you, do you want to lead up to do that, or are you trying to set yourself from now mm. so you're comfortable in the future? Um, uh, opportunities opportunities present themselves when I'm looking after myself on the field. Like that's sort of my main focus, and on, and off that things will happen. Uh, I think in the past I went the other way around it about it. I went <laughs> went looking for things outside of footy. And I wasn't playing my best footy and this year I got everything right. You know, I, I focused on my footy, I enjoyed what I was doing, I played good footy and then off that, you know, things outside of footy happened. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's a nice part of being a rugby league player, I guess, is the opportunities you get, the people you meet, you know, the, the, the business ventures you can create for yourself. But for me, it's about making sure I'm, I'm right on the field. Like, i got to get everything right then. I've got to prepare the best I can like, and not worry about that sort of stuff. But, um, yeah, the recipe is really just work hard, play good footy, and then those sort of things look after themselves. Yeah, just a little butterfly effect. Mm, yeah, you start exactly. start well now, then it'll just continue on. Exactly. what you do. And yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's that's sort of the way this year happened, and it was a good year, so... Yeah, something, copy and paste. Something I think you adapted to really well is um, playing around these concussions. Now, yeah. Obviously, from the outside, it looks like you're fine. But do you think subconsciously that affects your gameplay or do you think that's starting to... It did early. When I first come back from um, my big stint, my like six-week stint, yeah. my first couple of games back, I was nervous. Yeah. Um, As and even Yeah, even contact. Like, I was not... Sc- well, in a sense, I guess, on a mild level, scared to go in. Um, and I was playing halfback still at that point. And I, yeah, and I was just like, wasn't scared of actually making a tackle, but I was scared of what happens if I get knocked out again. Yeah. Um, and that probably, I probably had that for a few weeks, probably three three weeks, four weeks. And then once I went back to fullback, I was sweet. Yeah. So I literally just went back there and felt comfortable again. I don't know what I don't know what I was doing, but my I didn't have any concussions. And I just felt solid, like I just felt good. Whereas when I come back from those six weeks, I still felt a little bit vulnerable in a sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, was, yeah, I'm glad that's out of the way, to be honest. Yeah, I've noticed. I've done a few sessions with Fleg and just like three years difference, I've been hit harder than I've ever been in my life. <laughs> yeah. And well, just well, start when you go off an age, oh my God. Yeah. Gets, uh, the boys had a big session on Tuesday. And for some of the boys, it's like their first proper wrestle session. Yeah. Or like big NRL wrestle session, I guess, and yeah, some of them were sore that night. They felt like they played a game. Yeah. It's pretty. Our wrestle sessions suck. <laughs> You'd get smashed with yeah. recovery too, wouldn't you? Like after every session, you got a pretty structured yeah. recovery program. Hundred percent, we do. Yeah, we do now. Oh, we have always, but yeah, you just don't, don't want to get injured in this period. And yeah. um, recovery is so important in terms of what you eat, sleep, and obviously ice baths and saunas and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, um, what do you call it? I remember uh, the recovery the other day was unbearable, and especially when I was doing wrestling against Victor Radley, and I was in shreds. Oh, he's, I, yeah, I, heard, I don't even like really know him that well in terms of a training sense, but he's a beast. He's, he's unbelievable. Just yeah. the stuff he does and just – he didn't care who I was. Like, I'm 17, did not – Nah, no, nah, they, nah, they don't. Yeah. <laughs> nah, well – Nah, it's a good thing for you and for like he's yeah, obviously, no. but he's a beast. I don't know, how, yeah, it's yeah. Connor was because I talked to Connor obviously a fair bit, um, but I just know you just know that Rad trains hard. You can tell that he trains hard, yeah. doesn't care. Like probably doesn't even care about his body. It's a bit tapped. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's almost tapped. He just doesn't care about pain. Um, but yeah, it looks like he trains hard. Mate, he puts some of the biggest hits on in the NRL. That's what I mean. And he's not that big, like. Yeah. Like, really, he's not that big compared to some of the boys, but he can hit. He just puts his body out and mm. just throws it at people. Yeah, no, I've, yeah. Everywhere you go, like, wrestles, 
That's probably the worst session. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Easy. <laughs> you get flogged. And I'm a, like, last year, because I was playing half, I was like, yeah, I'm going to get around it. I'm back to fullback this year, so. <laughs> it's not what you expect either, especially for me. I didn't think we'd be doing jiu-jitsu and all this stuff. Mm. But yeah, our hook is, like, and every club's probably the same, like, jiu-jitsu, stuff like that. Some of the boys were doing last year. Um, it does make a difference. Yeah. It does make a difference. A tackle Huge tech difference. Mm. Huge difference. Mm. For sure. Well, um, kind of slide tracking off um rugby for now on. I was gonna ask, you got some tattoos. I've just been yeah. watching. You got a new one. I just I wanted to ask. I got this one done yesterday. It's just a roller coaster. It's just like a footy roller coaster. And then oh, right. I got one on my back as well. And I'll probably get a few more. Hopefully, before I go back to training next week. Are they random? Do they yeah, have they meaning? are. Yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> There's one. <for laughs> no, they don't have meaning at all. On your ankle. There's Some of them do, but not most of them. Yeah. I got barrel boys on my ankle. Yeah. And um. A Buzzy B, which is a New Zealand toy. Yeah. But the Barrel Boys was like a t-shirt brand we had for like four weeks. That's and weird. I got a tattoo. Oh, no. <laughs> Connor's got, Connor's, oh yeah, no, he's still got it. Uh, we're still Connor's tied got into a tattoo. Oh. You want to talk about that? They're forever yeah, boys. Um, yeah, so our school, like big on sport, academics, like it's very, it's a very cultural school. Yeah. And um, it's the first time we won like athletics last year in what, how long? Like... I reckon it's been like four, am I safe saying four years? Yeah, four or five years. And um, one of our coach, he's got like a little beaver tattoo on his leg. So like... He's got the a dumbest tattoo, right? Dumbest tattoo. It's the worst. I hope he sees this too. The yeah. school doesn't know about it, but he knows. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we are thinking when we maybe leave school, we all wanted to get a matching tattoo and we're all just... It's because we're dreading on it a bit. We, we, we agreed to it just before the athletics carnival kicked off. Because we weren't picked then to win. Won. There's, a, there's about win. two other schools ahead of us that were clearly meant to win it. Mm. And somehow we come in front and the seniors won the athletics. I on life, excited, yeah. won. So he's got the tattoo. We're, yeah. we're, we've got it. There's about four of us that have agreed we to it. We just get it on ankles. We, we, we want to kind of match him and all get it on our ankles. Yeah, yeah that's mad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for it. I love tattoos like that. <laughs> Memories, they'll last forever. Bit of a laugh. Probably yeah. your mum and dad probably weren't happy with them. Oh no, no mum my mum hates my tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's not happy. Every time, every time I get a tattoo, she just shakes her head. I reckon the um the one story that hurts me the most coming into the grand final this year for Hal Mats, we were playing the Bulldogs, oh. and this just shows how cocky a few of us got. <laughs> me and my mate from home, we um he really wanted to get a tattoo, and there's another kid from Ipswich. He's crazy, Kane. He was um he was at my house. And the three of us thought, if we win the grand final, should we get a tattoo? Sure enough, we lose the grand final. Yeah. Devastated. Figured didn't out get it. That's what it. No, we didn't get it. But that's. Uh, I reckon he was pissed off about that more than losing. <laughs> yeah, not getting the tattoo. What, not, not getting the tattoo. Yeah, we, sh- we shouldn't have spoken about it. I reckon that's just calm before us. If you are doing this already, you will have a few tattoos, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I've got to stay clear of it. Mum would lose it. Yeah. Very clarity. Nah, I know. Once I got... Because I said I'd never get tattoos in my arms. And then once I got one, it was sort of game over from there. Do you just it's kept going and going and going. Easier to ask for forgiveness. Than <laughs> <laughs> I'm not supporting that. <laughs> uh, and uh, well, I've got. I like my. I like my tattoos. Like at the start, when people were like, "What do they mean?" I'd be like, "Oh, I felt weird saying nothing, but I just like them now. Like I'm, I own it." Do you ever just come up with some meaning? Just mean. Yeah. So naps. Nothing. Naps has um. Dylan Napper has like the same tally. Not. That one, but he's got a tally in the same yeah. spot, yeah. and I got it because he got it. And then people were like, "Oh, what does that mean?" I was like, "Oh, I've got five family members in my in my family." Well, it doesn't mean that at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I could make up some stuff for some of them, <laughs> uh, but yeah, nah, I do like my tattoos. I reckon it's iconic now. You've built a little bit on it. I yeah, think. yeah. I'll. My next plan is to do like some on my back in the sort of same theme, but. That'll take a while. I'll probably take a year or two. Because like, I don't get them. I just get them in off seasons. Yeah. So. Well, I'm not, a, a, I'm not a tattoo just advocate. I'm not <laughs> saying everyone should get a tattoo. Yeah, but yeah, just got to clear it up now. Yeah. Well, I'm um, speaking of iconic. I've loved what you've done with the hair. Mm. What, yeah. where, where did that the come from? Where did that come I was a bit out? nervous to do it. Only because... Like I guess in media I get ha- I don't get hammered but I get a little bit of noise yeah. for what I do and I thought if I dyed my hair like are people gonna hate it are people gonna love it again just going back to like it doesn't really matter so what other people think um, 
I've always wanted to do it. I, I, I actually want to go pink. Um, pink. But I spoke to Adzi and he said, don't do that. So yeah. the coach said no. So I said, fair. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like it. I think it looks cool. Um, why did I do it? I don't know. I've always wanted so to. Why not? Yeah. You can do I don't know. I think, well, people were doing it in COVID and that was like a few years ago. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to do it now because everyone's doing it. So I just waited a few years until it sort of died off. Do you ever feel like the club's pretty strict on what you can do? I think there's got to be a level of... Um, like you are representing them. Yeah, you are representing the club. So I do understand, especially when I was young at, um, at the Broncos Academy. Yeah. I come up through the, like the grades with the Broncos and they were strict on hair, image, you know, and, and, and that's... I do agree with that to an extent because um, you are representing the club. But I also am a big believe in like being authentic and being yourself yeah um and i don't know like i don't know what the right or wrong and where you cross the line but i don't personally think that this is like you know screaming um in a, in a negative way so i was no, like, oh, i'm gonna do it right? and if it did it grows out i'll just get rid of it so yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's easy. yeah, yeah i just no, um i'll well. just shave my hair so yeah no i do i do understand that there's like a level of Again, you represent the club and you do have to look respectful, but um, that's probably why the pink hasn't got a run. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'll out? stick with the blonde. No, nah, I don't think it will. Not anymore. Lead, lead I'll, keep, um, I'll keep the blonde, though, for a little bit. Looks good. All right. Well, um, just before we kick off, do you have anything you'd like to say to, I don't know what audience we're going to have, maybe from our <laughs> age a bit older? Yeah. Um, so maybe life or just... Uh, I think some of those early questions you asked me, I was big on like your circle. Yeah. Um, that's always been a big part of my journey is surrounding myself with people that push me um, and want what's best for me. So like at the moment, there's like a group of four of us, five of us within within the team. Like we've got like a group chat and we send in like what we eat so we keep account each other accountable. Like little things like that has always put me in the best in my best position to succeed i think that's a huge part of my journey so if you and it's not easy like if you know you're mixing with the wrong crowd it's not easy to to pull yourself away from that crowd but you know if you want to achieve your goals and dreams you kind of have to um yeah dream big dream big set goals um surround yourself with good people and just work hard and just enjoy the work like i know pre-season sucks but like the benefits you get from it, they'll outweigh the, how much it hurts. And that's, I strongly believe in that. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, for you too, like just, and, and even starting this podcast, like do just something different, get outside your comfort zone. It's pretty awesome that you boys are doing this at 17, like 18. Way out of our comfort zone. <laughs> it's so good though. Like when I started, when we started our, our podcast, I, it, wait, we didn't know what we were doing. We don't know. And what you, we're doing yeah, I know yeah, your camera was on thirty percent when you got here. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Um, like just, but just yeah, put yourself out there and if wing it, like fake it till you make it, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but it's good that you boys are doing stuff like this and and, and still obviously dream and inspire to be footy players as well. Yeah, so it's awesome. It's very easy. Well, well, we we really appreciate you coming nah, on. Thanks for having me. Time. Honestly, it's it's, it's awesome. I haven't been. Done a couple podcasts now, but like haven't been on podcasts for a while, so it's nice. Yeah, we'd like to see a return. Yeah, I don't think that's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Connor. <laughs> oh, good. Well, we appreciate it, and good luck for the rest of the preseason. We'll be looking forward to you in the Newcastles, and yeah, thank you. Maybe hopefully to see a grand final. Hopefully, mate. All the best to you two as well in in your footy career and preseason next few years for you. It's exciting. Eighteen. It's an yeah. exciting age yeah. to be honest, boys. So. All the best with them. Might see you in grade. Might be versing you or playing with you one day. Hopefully. Who knows? That's that's the plan for that's now. That's the goal. That's a yeah, that's all, awesome. All podcasts, who knows? Might <laughs> be sitting here. Yeah, maybe start a podcast together. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Thanks, yeah, lads. We'll Thanks see. for having me.